Another thing, man, that's going on and proud to be an American is, as you guys know, man, I've been putting up videos of the Span Report podcast and of the Beer and Chicken podcast. I've been putting up on the Span Report podcast network feed on YouTube, right? And of course, man, I give the titles of these videos some little, cl- I give them real clickbaity titles, right? Because I want people who are not necessarily, um, you know, uh, privy to the Span Report podcast already. I do want to attract other people to listen to the show, draw people to the show, right? So I give it some clickbaity titles. And one of the titles I gave one of the videos, there was a, there was a clip that I did of the dude who was talking about he's off the Democratic Plantation, right? So what did I do? I named that video how I got off of the Democratic Plantation. And then in the show notes, man, like in, in, in the notes, I was like, psych, you know, but, and, you know, conservatives, thumbs down the video, whatever else. But what happened was with YouTube, like because I named the title of the video the way that I did, I got lumped up with a bunch of people who really do believe that I got off the Democratic plantation shit, right? So what I what what ended up happening was I, you know, out of curiosity, man, like I I started checking out some of those videos. Like, okay, who are these crazy motherfuckers that I didn't got linked up with, right? And so uh, I came across some dude named uh uh what's my what's this motherfucker's name? Um Brandon Tatum. Um, there's another, you know, Candace Owens. There's another black, it's it like a, a, a few black dudes, man. There was this one dude called Intense Fit or whatever. And he's talking about, you know, hashtag walk away. And they all talking about their red pill moment when they figured out that they weren't liberal and all this other shit. And truth be told, man, like, as when, when, when Kanye West came out with that shit, when Kanye West said, you know, like, um, he's not democratic or whatever. And I, and I believe it was Chance the Rapper said that black people don't have to be Democrats. And I said that, that, yeah, you don't, you do not have to be Democrats, but for the most part, people, black folks have been voting democratic, not because, um, they are so in love with the democratic party It's because the Republican party hasn't really shown them anything that, you know, like you haven't really courted the black vote. You've kind of gave black people the stiff arm a lot of times. And so when black people are clamoring to be on the Republican side of the ticket, a lot of it is them trying to distance themselves from other black people and feeling as if they got this message like, yo, man, I got I got I got the good shit, man. You need to get like me sort of thing. Right. So I was watching these videos. And I came across this one Brandon Tatum dude. This dude has 133,000 subscribers on YouTube, right? 133,000. And his thing is, he's a black dude who's also Republican, loves Donald Trump, and he makes white people feel good about their racism. Because he acts as if, and he's, he's one of those black folks who will tell them, that their racism is non-existent and that black people is tripping much the same way that Candace Owens does uh, much the same way. A lot of these dudes do, man. Like it was a few names I had written down and I, I don't know what the fuck I did with my card, but yeah, it was a few of these dudes and they're permeating YouTube, right? It's become a cottage industry of black dudes who are talking about their love of Donald Trump, um, how they're walking away from the democratic plantation, so to speak. And, um, they have this hashtag right now. I believe a white dude set this hashtag up, but they have this hashtag, hashtag walk away. And this has been kind of like, um, I, I, I noticed this was kind of like blowing up a little bit on Twitter where folks are talking about hashtag walk away. And they were talking about, yo, this is a movement. This is a movement. And even some of the people that I interacted with on Twitter that were talking about hashtag walk away. A lot of those accounts had like five or six followers got American Eagles, you know, American flags, you know, one dude had a pit bull with an American flag face on it. And he's got like 10 followers and he's talking about hit the moment he walked away from the democratic plantation. And I like, you know, he, he's talking to me, he's calling me homie. And I'm like, yo comrade, like, where'd you learn this language? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How'd you learn to try to be hip? You know what I mean? And so, um, one of the things I said I was going to do, man, because you know, this is, this is part of being American, I guess is I was going to play a little bit of this Brandon Tatum dude because these are, this is like, this is the level of cognitive dissonance that is being spread. And, you know, like white folks feel good about this shit, but yo, man, I'm going to just play this and we're going to respond a little bit to this. But this is Brandon Tatum on YouTube saying Democrats hate black people. Hashtag walk away. So let let me uh, pull this up so you guys can check this out along with me, man, because this shit is retarded. 
retarded. And I said retarded. God damn it. This shit is retarded. Um, let me let's see. Screen share. And all right. So we're gonna check this out, man. Brandon Tatum, Democrats hate black people. Hashtag walk away. Check this out, y'all. Cause this shit's 14 minutes we on everybody. The thing. So I'm out at the pool, uh, watching my son swim around. And for context, he did this shit July 2nd. And I think he think he's a fish, but I digress. <laughs> but anyway, I wanted to make this video just to tell a quick, I guess, summary why I make the bold statement to say that the Democratic Party hate black people. And this is something that it took a while for me to realize, a while for me to understand. It took a little bit uh, to chew on, kind of like a piece of steak. It take it, it, steak is very difficult to chew and digest. It ain't difficult to chew if you cook it right, nigga. That's what I'm saying. Um, but it was a piece of steak for me to, to chew and digest the fact that the Democratic Party historically ha, ha, has hated black people. Now, nowadays, people will argue that the Democratic Party hates America and hates everybody, and I would concur with that argument, but when you look at history and you look at the people that are being used, abused and tricked and conned into supporting the Democratic Party, I have to say the race that's getting the raw end of the deal is black people. And the reason I say that is because for years and years and years, people have told us that we should vote Democrat, that the Republicans are racist, that the Republicans don't care about black people. They don't. That the Republicans are somehow anti um, African American agenda, African American expansion. They are. Prosperity. They are. And it has all been a lie. No, it hasn't. It's unfortunate because a lot of us believe it blindly. Not really. You know, I consider myself a passive aggressive Democrat. I voted for Barack Obama his second term. If you would have asked me, was I Democrat or Republican my whole life, I would have said a Democrat. And to be honest, until now, I don't even know why I would even say I was a Democrat. So, OK, so you voted for Barack Obama his second term. You didn't vote the first time. I don't know what like you think that because you voted for Barack Obama once that that somehow made you a Democrat and that like you weren't even really politically engaged. But. You, 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 you would call yourself a passive aggressive Democrat, whatever the fuck that even means. But uh, I didn't even know the difference between the Democrat and the Republican Party. So you weren't educated on what the party platforms were. Okay. If you would ask me what a conservative was, I wouldn't have known. This is the honest to God truth. Okay. And so the the Democrats, in my honest opinion, based on my research, very impartial research. Sure it was. I believe that Democrats have historically hated black people. And I think they still hate black people today. Now, this is why. And you don't think Republicans do? I say this. It's not baseless and it's not me coming up with something to make you feel good. I'm just telling the truth. And if you disagree with me, you could literally go look this stuff up for yourself. And I did fact check me. First and foremost, I'm going to start with the Ku Klux Klan. I grew up (laughs) believing that the Ku Klux Klan was probably Republicans. (laughs) The reason why you think that the Ku Klux Klan are probably Republicans, because damn it, they voting Republican right now. They're voting Republican right now, nigga. The Ku Klux Klan endorsed Donald fucking Trump, you dick. <laughs> they endorse Donald Trump. The alt-right right now consists of Klansmen, neo-Nazis, uh, Nazis, um, uh, uh, white nationalist. They out here giving Hitler the, the Hitler Sieg Hail salute and all of this shit. And the Klan is right along with these motherfuckers. They vote Republican now, Chief. So, like, this goes back to the whole thing, man. When they when 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 Republicans get to talking about well, the Democratic Party is what started the KKK. You damn you know what? I don't know anybody who says, nah, that ain't true. Like, most people understand that. Most people understand that. Historically, that is accurate. That the Democratic Party was the party of the Ku Klux Klan. Most of those folks left that damn party when John, uh, not, not, not John, uh, Lyndon B. Johnson decided that he was going to pass the Civil Rights Act. 
decided he was going to pass the Voting Rights Act, decided he was going to uh, do the uh, the Civil it was the Civil Rights Act, the Voting Rights Act, and it was another one. All of these happened, and I, God damn it, y'all know what I mean. But Lyndon B. Johnson did all of this as a Democrat, and a lot of the Democrats then who were opposed to a lot of that civil rights legislation that, that, that Lyndon B. Johnson signed into law, he was like, yo, man, we ain't doing this no more. They either left and became Dixiecrats or they flipped up and came up straight up Republicans. And ever since then, ever since then, Republicans have had a stranglehold on what was considered considered conservative values. Now, one would wonder why conservative values are con- attributed to the Republican Party or why racism is considered a conservative value. Why? Because people are trying to conserve their way of life. They want to conserve the way things have always and will be historically, right? They're like, yo, we've always been living this way. Why we got to change it now? You hear that same shit, not only just race, but in sexual orientation and in sexism, like all of that shit. We've been doing it for so long. Why we got to change it up now, right? So when Lyndon Baines Johnson signed that legislation in the law, a lot of those dudes who were Klansmen, who were Democrats, like, you know what? I can't fuck with this party anymore. It doesn't represent what my beliefs are. It doesn't represent what my political beliefs are. I'm out this bitch. And they found a home in the Republican Party. But he's talking about, I don't know, 50 years ago when Democrats were openly Klansmen. It's not the same. It, 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 th- those two parties are not what they used to be anymore. Because the Republicans are racist, right? The Ku Klux Klan definitely murdered, slaughtered. They did. And damaged the lives of so many black people. They did. Who created the Democratic Party? Who founded the Democratic Party? All Maybe of that. The Democratic Party, but the Ku Klux Klan. Yeah. The Democratic Party. So why are they all Republicans now? Why are they all voting Republican now? Why David Duke ran as a Republican. David Duke was the Grand Dragon of the Louisiana chapter of the Ku Klux Klan. David Duke also endorsed Donald Trump. Donald Trump tried to act like he didn't even know who the fuck David Duke was. Guess who David Duke was? Former Grand Dragon of the Louisiana chapter of the Ku Klux Klan. Guess what party he belongs to? The goddamn Republicans. You know, that was astonishing to me. Why was it? I not believe it. Of course you could. And then when you talk about the ideas in the pursuit of the Democratic Party, even way back then, they were the white supremacists. They were the ones that wanted white nationalism or white nationalism. They are the ones that did not want black people to vote. Interesting you would say that, man. Interesting that you would say that because I've already established the white nationalists, neo-Nazis, Klansmen are all voting Republican now and are all endorsing of Donald Trump, right? We've already established that. That's not even up for debate. You can go and look at the Charlottesville incident. You can go look at the fact that Breitbart is pretty much a uh, is pretty much a mouthpiece for the Republican establishment. Well, right now for the uh, the Donald Trump establishment, and Breitbart is a sounding board for a lot of right wing um, alt right sort of uh, propaganda and talking points. And Steve Bannon was the chief of staff or uh, chief strategist of the Republican Party who runs Breitbart, right? Like, not even going into that. But he starts talking about voting rights, right? Start talking about voting. And that the Democrats didn't want black people to vote. He, This is true, man. Like, back in the 60s and the 50s and whatnot, even going back into, like, Reconstruction and stuff, man, like, yo, Democrats and 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 um and the KKK made it their mission to make sure that black people could not vote. Made it their mission. They tried to take that vote away from black folks because in a lot of those states, man, black people outnumbered a lot of those white folks, right? A lot outnumbered them, and they would have been a considerable voting block, and they would have had they would have exerted some political influence, right? And White folks weren't trying to hide it. So what did they do? They tried to kill black folks to intimidate them. They tried to come up with all these rules to keep black people from going to the polls. Well, that's where you get the poll tax. And then you had the, the literacy test. Well, like, you know, if your granddaddy uh, could vote, then you could vote. But a lot of black folks, granddaddies couldn't vote. So now they can't vote, right? They came up with all these funky ass rules to keep black people from going to the polls. Ironically, who's doing that right now? Republicans. Republicans right now are introducing as as a matter of fact when the 196 uh, the, the voting rights act of 1964 wasn't recertified 
there was a plethora of states that were waiting on that to happen. And they came up with voting ID laws all across the South, all across the West, mostly in Republican strongholds, right? And what were those voting ID laws designed to do? It was designed to make it more difficult for poor people and people of color to go and vote, right? Just in North Carolina, they went all the way to the Supreme Court and they fought those voting right laws that re the Republican governor, Pat McCrory at the time, was the governor of North Carolina, Pat McCrory, and the Republican legislature of North Carolina had put in place that was laser focused on keeping black people from voting, right? You can go look up that decision. It's, it's Googleable, right? But then if you want to look at some of the more stricter places that have voting ID laws, when it comes to like there's, there's a strict adherence to having a certain type of ID in, the, in order to, for you to be allowed to vote. Um, just a cute, just, just a few real quick. Arkansas is a red state. Arkansas has a Republican governor. His name is Asa Hawthor, uh, Hutchinson. He's Republican. The, uh, the, the legislature in Arkansas is overwhelmingly Republican. The House and Senate in the state of uh, Arkansas, Republican. Uh, you look at Georgia, who also has a Republican governor. They have voter ID laws, and his name is uh, Governor Nathan Deal. And their state representatives, their state legislature is also overwhelmingly Republican. You look at Indiana, they have a governor right now, Eric Holcomb, who's a Republican, who was actually uh, the lieutenant governor behind Mike Pence, who is now currently the vice president of the United States, right? He was his replacement in Indiana. And Indiana also has a overwhelmingly Republican state legislature. You look at uh, Kansas, who has uh, Jeff Collier. He's a Republican. And Kansas also has an overwhelmingly Republican state legislature. There's, And this is just a few. Like I, I, I could have wrote down a few more, but y'all get the point. Overwhelmingly Republican governments, governors, and state governments are implementing voter ID laws to make it harder for people to go to the polls and vote. And yet here he is talking about, well, historically, it was the Democrats who were doing this. It was the Democrats who were doing that. We here in 2018, man, on July 2nd, you sat your ass down in front of a camera and start talking about what Democrats historically did back in the day and tried to justify that as a reason why you're Republican when everything you're complaining about right fucking now, the people that you align yourself with are doing right now. Right? It makes no sense sense and it's googleable and you can look this shit up if you want to but if you got an agenda to you know kind of promote then by all means go do it because truth be told man there's a lot of these like i said i think it's a cottage industry of black dudes who get on youtube and they spout this nonsense and they have an echo chamber of white folks who look at them as the unicorn and they say, well, damn it, here's the black dude who's saying exactly what it is that I like. And he's making sure these niggers are in line. And they, 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 I, I, God damn it, I, God damn it, I'm telling you, man, these niggers are lying, man. And this guy right here, he gets it. He gets it. You know how I know? You know how I know this is true? I remember, like, before I started podcasting and shit, right, I had my channel on YouTube. And, like, uh, I remember I did a video. And that video is still up, right? I did a video years ago called the proliferation of ignorant niggas right and in that video man i was talking sh cash shit mostly about black people right cash shit mostly about black people mostly about uh poor black folks and some of the attitudes that i thought at the time were ignorant and everything else it was before i really really sat down and thought about the circumstances surrounding everything that we do right and I named that video at that time. I forget exactly what the year was, man. But this is before I was doing a podcast. It was at least eight years old now. But I named that video the proliferation of ignorant niggas. I never took that video down. Like I said, I'm not I, I don't take any of my shit down because that's what I thought at the time. All of my shit is a living document, man. You've seen the growth of span over the course of the last eight to 10 years. Right. I, I don't take any of my shit down. I own all of it. But in that video, somebody in the comment section of that video, someone mentioned to me that that video had been put on Stormfront. Now, Stormfront 
is a white supremacist website. And Stormfront was using that video to say, well, here's one of the niggers who gets it. Right? They were using my video to pat themselves on the back all, all the while while talking shit about me. Right? Understand at the time, man, like I said, that was how I felt. That was um, that I was coming from a place of ignorance. I was coming from a place of not really knowing what the fuck it was I was talking about at the time, man. Real talk. I hadn't really thought a whole hell of a lot about it. And even then, I was like, man, I thought what I was saying was truthful. I thought what I was saying was like, yo, man, this it might it, it may be ugly, man, but we need to hear this, right? That's what I was thinking at the time. Meanwhile, while I'm trying, well, at the time, what I thought I was presenting a positive message and saying like, yo, man, we need to do better. And this is when I was really into my respectability politics and all of that bullshit. White folks were using me to spread my shit to other white folks to further denigrate black people. So I understand how this shit works, man. I understand it. The only thing is I didn't embrace white people doing this shit. This dude uh, and the many others like him have embraced the fact that like, yo, I can be the, the unicorn Negro and maybe I can get paid off of it. You know, if I could put this video out and I get 130,000 views on this video, man, that check probably looks really fucking nice. You know, some of them have sold their souls in that way. But I remember that how white folks will take those messages from black people who are trying to separate themselves from other black people and use them to justify the racist shit that they do on the day to fucking day basis. And this is why niggas like this make me sick. Because they've sold their souls for the check. I don't think that any of these niggas really believe any of this shit that they're saying. Whether that be this dude, Brandon Tatum, whether that be Candace Owens, whether that be Paris Denard, whether that be uh, Charles Payne, whether that be any of these motherfuckers, I really don't believe that they believe this shit. And this whole thing has been kind of wrapped up in this uh, walk away movement, walk away, walk away. You know, the Democrats aren't being civil. You know, Maxine Waters is inciting violence and all of this shit. Like, how do you fix your face to talk about Maxine Waters inciting violence when you're the dude who's occupying the White House right now always does that shit. Talks about punching people in the face. Talk about paying the legal fees of people who also punch people in the face. Talk about uh, grabbing women by the pussy. Like, how are you talking about civility? How do you even fix your face to even bring that sort of shit up? When this is the shit that comes out of the dude that you follow. Right? So Brandon Tatum is on YouTube talking about all this research he done did and found out, hey, man, the Democrats used to do a whole bunch of shit, man. They used to do a whole bunch of shit. Everything you're complaining about right now, the party you affiliate yourself with is doing the exact same thing. Now, interestingly enough, man, and I'm not going to talk about, the, you know, well, I'm not going to play any more of this fucking video. Like I said, it's a 15 minute long, 14 minute long video. I'm not about to uh, to play that whole thing. But Turning Point USA, which is the uh, the outfit that Candace Owens works for. They had what they would call a black influencers retreat. Right. They had a black influencers retreat. And at that black influencers retreat. Um, they were trying to figure out a way to get a bunch of black conservative YouTubers together to figure out how they can more influence the black community for this current hashtag walk away movement, right? This was coming weeks ago. They telegraphed it weeks ago. They all got together. All of them have videos on their channels right now, because again, I became aware of these motherfuckers because of that one video I put up on YouTube. They all came together to figure out a way to strategize to make it appear as if black people in mass were leaving the Democratic Party. Now, what I will say is this black people owe none of these political parties any alliances. They don't owe any allegiances to any of these parties. Right. Nothing whatsoever. Um, 
by and large, most black people who vote Republican vote, I mean, I'm sorry, who vote Democratic feel like they don't have much of a choice because the Republican Party hasn't exactly endeared themselves to black people with the policies that they propose. There's a lot of people who are socially, a lot of black people who are socially conservative, man. Like you think about a lot of black people who are uh, who are really into the church, who are really into uh, moral, uh, you know, a, a little bit of moral superiority. So even like the respectability politics thing, man, there's a lot of black people who buy into that shit. And Republicans could really tap into that if they weren't so fucking racist, man, they really could. But by and large, most black people who vote Democratic, one, feel like they don't have another choice. And two, yo, man, if, if, if I got to choose between this one and this one, that one wants me dead. This one wants to kind of kill me a little bit slower. There's really no allegiance to the Democratic Party. It's not a whole hell of a lot of places where they have to go. Right. And we could talk about, um, say, for instance, third party candidates and stuff like that, man. If y'all would like. I, Real talk, third party candidates would be good if you saw them more than every four years when like the big election comes. Like you never see the Green Party until it's time to run for president. Like you never see these motherfuckers. Where's Jill Stein right now? She took that money and, and bounced. Nobody's seen her since. Took it and bounced. Libertarians don't give a fuck about us. Well, don't give a fuck about most people anyway. They like most as a matter of fact, libertarians are like, you know, they like, yo, man, restaurant can discriminate against you. Fuck it. Most people ain't really buying that. Excuse me. So when it comes to uh, when it when it when it comes to where black people place their electoral power, Democrats, for the most part, are the beneficiaries of that. Republicans don't get those same sort of love that, that that same level of engagement because they aren't engaging with the black community in a meaningful way that actually addresses their concerns and then on top of that you have neo nazis the clan the alt right all of these motherfuckers who really hate black people coalescing around the the, the republican party and so when you have people like that coalescing around the Republican Party, yo, man, you're, you're, you're not going to get a whole lot of black folks uh, fucking with you. You're just not. Black people are a hell of a lot more politically astute and politically savvy than people give them credit for. People believe that black people like, say, for instance, people talk about Barack Obama and black people voting overwhelmingly for Barack Obama, but they didn't vote for Hillary Clinton in the same amount of numbers. Well, for one, Hillary Clinton wasn't a black woman, right? If Hillary Clinton had been Kamala Harris, maybe they like, you know, enthusiasm may have been a little bit, a little bit more up, right? But at the same time, like, yo, it's not as if white people have ever had to even question who they get to vote for, right? Never even had to question it. There's always been a white person who had a viable chance of winning the presidency of the United States. Always. And even when black people had a choice between two black people, hey amen, Alan Keyes couldn't have won president of the United States. Tim Scott couldn't have won president of the United States. I think it was Tim Scott, I believe it is. This dude from South Carolina, I think his name is, uh, from, yeah, Senator. Couldn't have won. Like, black people pay attention to what your politics are, too. Black people are more politically astute than people give them credit for. We don't vote for people just because they're black. We don't vote for people just because they're Republican. What is your platform, man? What are you doing for me? Because, again, the government works for you, not the other way around. Right? So, yeah, man. Um, walk away movement, I think it's some AstroTurf shit. I think it's some, uh, some Russian bot ate it shit especially when you go to twitter and you start you, you even search up the hashtag man a lot of the proponents of it are really some nobody people that you've never heard of before ever in your life uh a lot of them have very low followers man like 10 to 15 followers on twitter man um but it's a way to kind of boost the hashtag and a way to make it look as if it's more prominent than it is it's not a real fucking movement it's not and so um yeah because of that, um, yo, man, that's that's been proud to be an American, man. She that I'm proud to be an American.